Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I appreciate you all very, very much. And so I hope you're having a great day. Um, my day's been enjoyable. I haven't done anything remarkable. <laughs> and I like it that way. <laughs> Just a nice, calm day. So anyway, guys, in today's video, I want to share with you about a granny rectangle blanket okay so um i'm going to show you two different ways to start a granny rectangle blanket so what we're going to do is we're going to go to my desk and i'm going to show you the first way and then i'm going to show you a second way and then i will come back in here and we will talk about it okay so this is really a short intro because I don't want the video to be so, so long. So let's go to my desk. Okay, friends, thank you for joining me at my desk today. We are going to be working on different ways to make a rectangle granny blanket. So I'm using a number four worsted weight yarn. I'm just using a red heart acrylic. And I'm using my six millimeter J hook that is my hook preference for blankets and such because I like the drapiness that it gives it doesn't turn out so stiff you know I mean it I like I like how it makes the blanket feel <laughs> and but you can use a five millimeter hook if that's what you want to use it's not going to change anything so take your yarn and go ahead and make a slip knot ever how you're used to making a slip knot all right, and let's put that on our hook. Now I am using a little hand device here to help me, so don't let that um, distract you from what we're doing. Okay, we are going to chain 24. And you can hold your thumb here, you know, hold that down a little bit. You don't want your chain too tight, so loosen it up just a little bit. One three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And 21, 22, 23, and 24. So here we have this little chain. It's not very long, but that is going to be the center of our blanket. All right, so not counting this loop on the hook, starting right here, we're going to count back four. One, two, three, four. So put your finger at number four and you should have three chains right in front of that. So we're going to double crochet. So that means we're going to yarn over and put a double crochet in that fourth chain. Okay, so the three chains that we skipped is actually going to count as one of our double crochets. And then we made a double crochet. So we're going to put one more double crochet into that same chain that we just put that double crochet. So there we go. Now we have a little cluster here of three double crochets, even though one of them was just the first three chains that we skipped. Now we're going to go ahead and start one of our corners right here at the beginning of this. So we're going to chain two. All right, yarn over, and we're going to go in the very next chain right here, and we're going to put three double crochets in that one chain. Okay. So there's three double crochets. 
Now let's lay that down and see what we have right here. We have uh, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets in the next chain space. And all three of those are in what one space. So that's what we have going on so far. Okay guys, so for this foundation part of my blanket, which is the very center of my rectangle blanket, I am not going to chain one in between my clusters. You can if that's what you choose to do, but I'm going to skip the chaining one here. When I get to the next row, I am going to chain one in between my clusters. It's just on this foundation row, I want it tight and sturdy, I guess you could say. So we are going to just yarn over for another double crochet. And what we're going to do is count two chains. One, two, and in the third chain from the cluster that we're at right now, we're going to count the next two chains. And then the third chain, we're going to put three double crochets all in that one chain. Okay. okay, and we're going to yarn over and skip two chains, and in the third one, put three double crochets. And one more, all in that same chain space. All right. Same thing, yarn over, skip two, and in the third one, put three double crochets. Sorry about that. Okay. Now yarn over, skip two chains, and in the third chain, put three double crochets. Yarn over, skip two, and in the third one, put three double crochets. All right, let's see what we got, what it's looking like here. Okay, back up here we have our corner, corner that we made, and then we come down, and so far we have from the corner on down, one, two, three, four, five, six clusters so far. Okay, and that's not counting the corner right here. That's actually seven if you turn the corner, but I'm talking about on this straight line, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now we only have a few chains left, but yarn over and we're going to go in the third chain. One, two, three. So we skip two and we go into the third and that leaves one chain open at the end. And that's what we want. So three double crochets right into this next to the last chain. My yarn is super splitty. Okay. 
so that's what we have and that gives us one two three four five six seven clusters in a row and down here there's turn the corner and there's a cluster okay so what we're going to do at our last cluster there we're going to chain two okay and we're going to mirror what we did on this end we chained two so now we're going to yarn over and that very last chain space it's the very next one from this cluster we are going to put three double crochets Okay, so let's look and see what we have going on here. We have our first corner right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters, and then it turns for our next corner. And that's what it, you should have going on right now. Okay, so now from this last cluster that we did when we turn the corner there we are going to chain two because we're creating another corner okay and now you can kind of turn your work around like this we had it like that and we just kind of turned it this way as we were crocheting all right so now we need to do double crochets clusters along this side so we just chained two and I want you to see this right here. See this little hole right here? This little cluster at the bottom of it, or now it's at the top since we turned it, there is a hole right there. We're going to go in that hole right here and do our three double crochets. Okay, we're not, we're not doing it in this one right here where the last, where the last one is. We're doing it in the next one so yarn over and now you can crochet over this tail here if you want to so i just want to make sure everybody is clear where i'm going in at i'm going right here okay and i'm putting three double crochets Okay, now see what we did there? We, we created a corner here and a corner here. Okay, so now yarn over, look at the next cluster, and you see this hole right here, right in front of my thumb. We're going to go into that, and we're going to put three double crochets. Okay, and the same thing, we're going to move to the next cluster, and there's a hole right there at the top of that cluster, which is really kind of at the bottom of the cluster, but since we're holding it this way, we're going to say the top there, but three double crochets. All right, and we're just going to move right along, right on down the little hole that's at the next cluster there. Okay. Yarn over and move to the next cluster. Okay. 
and just keep moving on down just like that. Three double crochets in each of those holes. Okay, so we have one more here. Okay, three double crochets in there. Okay, now we can chain two. All right, and you want to slip stitch into this cluster right here. Just slip stitch into there. Tighten it up, and that's what we have. That is the center piece for our granny rectangle. Now, you can decide if you want to change colors or if you want to continue in the color that you're using. Now, if you're using a cake, like a carrying cake or something you know similar to that, you might want to just continue around and let the colors play out ever how they're going to play out. But if you're making a scrap blanket or using different colors and such, you would want to cut your yarn here and tie off to start a new color. So I'm going to show you real quick if you're if you're using a cake and you want to continue. There are several ways to do this. Um, some people slip stitch into the back loops and some people don't. Now if you went into that top of that chain three then you would slip stitch into the next stitch and then slip stitch into the next just just like that so a little simple slip stitch and then you would need to slip stitch over into this corner space and that's what you get now some people don't like to do that because they think you can see your yarn here and you know you can sometimes I don't think it's that noticeable once you get going on the blanket um, that does not bother me I like for my things to look homemade so you decide however you want to do that um, and then if you were going to continue on with this color you would just chain three and then double crochet into this chain two space that we're working in and then another double crochet so you have three double crochets and in the corner spaces we always chain two chain two and then you would put three more double crochets right into that space all in that same space three double crochets chain two three double crochets all in that little corner space okay so that's what we have there and now this is where I chain one in between my clusters and the next three double crochet cluster goes in between clusters so we don't have to go into the the chain the stitch space there when I mean, we go in right here where my fingers at so this makes it super easy you just do three double crochets right here okay and then you can chain one in between your space your clusters or you cannot chain one that is your choice whether you want to do that or not okay so that's what you want to do if you want to carry on you can change colors every row every so many rows ever how you want to do it I'm going to tear this back out I'm gonna take it all the way back to this chain two space Okay, and 
I'm because I'm going to change colors and show you an example of that. So from that chain two space, you just want to slip stitch into that granny cluster. Okay, and then you would cut your yarn and tie off. Okay, and then I'm not going to really tie off because um, I'm just doing this for an example. So I'm not going to tie off, but I am going to slip stitch that and I'm just going to leave a big loop out here. And I'm going to show you how to join a new yarn. So get whatever color you would want to go next. And... I do this in the corner space and when I am adding new colors as I go around and around I don't add them all in the same corner if I add one in this corner the next time I add a new color I'll switch it around and start with this corner and I just do that I, I start in different corners every time now I like to leave a little bit of tail because I want to weave that in really well I don't want to have enough tail to weave in. If you leave a short, short tail like this, you don't have much to weave in. And I am going to chain over, but um, I also just like to weave in whatever's left there. Okay, so I have a tail there. I'm going to put my hook in that chain two space, big old gap in space right there. I'm putting my hook into that. And I'm going to place my yarn on my hook. Now I have the tail over here and my working yarn closest to me. So I'm going to come up and grab my working yarn and chain three. And you can drop that tail. Okay, but pull your tail up. Pull your tail kind of up a little bit. Now yarn over and go back in that gaping hole there. <laughs> and we're going to put another, we're going to put a double crochet. But I've got that tail kind of coming up here, so I am crocheting over it a little bit. So we have our chain three that we did. And then we made a double crochet and we're going to do one more double crochet. And then chain two. And then put three more double crochets in that same little sp spot. And then you just keep on working. Putting, you can put a chain one in between your clusters or not your choice but now you just work all the way around your blanket change colors when you want to don't change colors that is your choice your blanket all right and then for me I'm gonna put a chain one space in between my clusters so remember this is what you do on your corner cluster chain two cluster in between your clusters coming down, you can chain one or not chain one, but always chain two in the corners. So you have a corner here, you're gonna put a cluster, chain two, a cluster. And if you want to chain one in between it, you would chain one and then go to this cluster, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And I hope I said that right right here. <laughs> and then just come down and when you get down here you can you can keep going with that same color or you can just stop tie off you know slip stitch into this tie off your yarn and start with another color but like I said I wouldn't I wouldn't start all my new colors in the same corner I would swap it up and do different corners like the next one you could do here and then whenever you change to a new color do it here and then do the next one here and just keep going around like that so that is one way to make a granny rectangle blanket now I'm going to come back and show you another way 
Okay guys, so if you are new to crocheting and say you've just learned to do granny squares and you're just not ready to learn to do this rectangle um, strip, say you're just not ready to learn something else, you're comfortable doing granny squares, but yet you still want to do a granny square, a granny rectangle blanket, you can still do that. I'm going to show you how today. Now, sometimes I know when I'm comfortable in my crochet and I've been at places where I'm just not ready to learn anything new. I want to enjoy this for a while. So that's okay. You can still do a granny rectangle blanket. All right. So we are going to make some little granny squares. So go ahead and make your slip knot and get it on your hook. Okay, so what I'm going to do for my little granny square here is I'm going to I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm going to slip stitch into that very first chain I did and pull my yarn through and then I'm just going to pull it through on the loop that was on my hook okay I feel like I should just show you that one more time so here we have my chain four I'm gonna poke my hook through that very first chain yarn over and grab that yarn and bring it through and then just pull it through the loop on my hook Okay, now I'm going to chain three. This counts as our very first double crochet. Yarn over, and then we're going to go in right down here, kind of in the center of our little circle that we just made. Yarn over, and we're going to make a double crochet. So counting the chain three that we did, and this double crochet, that's two. So we need one more, so we have three double crochets. Okay. So that's what we have so far, just three double crochets. And then we're going to chain two, because we're creating a corner. Yarn over, go right back into the center, center, and do three double crochets. Okay, now I'm going to chain two because that's another corner and go back into the center and chain, I mean, do three double crochets. It's two and three. Okay, you can see what we kind of got going on here. We have our first corner here, our second corner there. So, and then we got three clusters. So we're going to chain two, yarn over, and put three more double crochets into the center. Okay, and now we're going to chain two, and you want to connect back up into your first set there. You can go into the uh, chain three, the top of the chain three that you originally done, started out this with. You can just slip stitch into that, grab your yarn, and pull it through. and pull it through the loop on your hook okay now I don't like how I did that actually I I rarely rarely go into that top of the chain three I always go into the middle one because I feel like it squares up my square a little better and 
just pulls it together because sometimes um, when I go in the chain three I feel like that it splays my square out it doesn't tighten it up for a good square it, it's kind of splayed out so I always slip stitch into the middle of these three the first one is a chain three and then we have a double crochet and a double crochet I always slip stitch into that middle one and then just slip stitch into the next one, the next top of the next double crochet. And then we want to get to that corner. So we slip stitch into the corner and there we go. That is the center of our granny square. So I'm going to chain three. A yarn over and I'm going to put a double crochet right here. And then I'm going to put one more double crochet. So we have three double crochets. That chain three counted as the first one. Okay. Now I'm going, we're working in the corner. And in the corner, we always put two double crochets. So, I'm, I mean two, sorry. In the corners, we always put three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So I need to chain two. One, two. Now I'm going to yarn over and put three more double crochets all in that same space. Okay, see how that made a corner? Three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Now I'm going to chain one in between my clusters. Some people chain one, some people don't. You have to find what you're comfortable doing. Now I'm going to jump right over to this corner and I'm going to put three double crochets. Okay, and because we're in a corner, and we're creating a corner, we are going to chain two, and then go right back into that corner that we're working in, and do three double crochets. two and one more and I feel like I'm about to lose my hook <laughs> all right now I'm going to chain one because I'm on a side and then I'm going to yarn over go to this next corner and do three double crochets Two. I've already yarned over. <laughs> okay, that's three double crochets. Chain two. And then put three double crochets back into that same corner space. Okay, so we've got one corner, two corners, three corners. We have one corner left. I'm going to chain one and then skip over to the next corner and put three double crochets. Chain two and three double crochets. All right. 
right? Now chain one and we're going to slip stitch over here and I'm doing it in the middle double crochet there slip stitch in and slip stitch with the loop that's on your hook okay so here's what we have we have two rows so far one two I'm going to do one more row because I want this to be three rows around so I'm gonna I need to get to this corner so I'm gonna slip stitch and then slip stitch into the corner one more time okay so now when we go around we have a we have a corner a chain space and a corner so we need to ch do our corners three double crochets and our corners so let's just do that together right here we're going to chain three and then put two more and that counts as a double crochet so we're putting two more double crochets into this space Uh, all right and now chain two and then three more double crochets right into that corner Let me pull me some more yarn out here okay so I have one double crochet I need two more for this section of the corner okay now we're working across the side here I'm going to chain one between my clusters on the sides even though we chain two in the corners so I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to make yarn over and I'm going to put three double crochets in this space right here. So that's one. Two. And three. Okay. Then I'm going to chain one and come into this corner and just make a corner. Our three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So once you get the hang of this, it is very easy. It is very therapeutic for me to sit and make granny squares. That I love making granny squares. So I like granny square projects. Okay, I'm going to chain, we're on the sides again, so I'm going to chain one, and then make my three double crochet cluster here on the side. chain one and then make the corner Much more to go we got two sides done one more double crochet right here all right and then 
I'm chaining one. Okay, and now three double crochets in this little chain space. chain one and then we're on our last corner let's start that one over side and we will be done with this granny square so it's just three rounds all right now chain one and our last cluster here goes right in that chain one space Okay. Now I'm going to chain one and connect, slip stitch to connect my square. And there we have it. That is done. You can tie off, cut your yarn and tie off, weave in your ends. Now we need to make three of these. So go ahead and make three granny squares that are three rounds. Now let me show you. You can start in the middle and count diagonal. One, two, three. We did three rounds. Or you can also, from your corners, count your clusters across the side. One, two, three. That's how you know how many rounds you went. Alright, so make two more and I will meet back up with you to show you what we're going to do. Okay, so now I have three little granny squares made and this is going to be the center of my blanket so before we made a strip that was going to be the center and now I've made three granny squares these are a little longer than this strip um, you could go two if you wanted it smaller now you could go bigger on these you could go five rounds on your granny squares if you wanted to start out that way but you do want to think about this if you wanted to add like more of a center here you want to think about this as you're working around your blanket um, you want to think about it growing lengthwise and widthwise you want it to kind of be proportioned um, you don't want it like super long but not very wide right so you you don't want to go too long on this center piece that you're starting with is what I'm trying to say because as you go around and around your blanket it's going to get longer before it gets wider so keep that in mind you don't want to like line up six of these because your blanket would not be proportioned you would end up with like more like a table runner for your dining table of course you could keep going around and around but it's still going to look more like a table runner instead of a blanket you want it to grow equally lengthwise and widthwise okay so we're going to make this our centerpiece so what we need to do is we need to connect these now you can single crochet them together you can sew them to together such as a whip stitch or whatever um, and we are going to have a couple ends to weave in. And I did weave in my ends already on this. I'm going to just single crochet mine together real quick. That would be the fastest 
thing for me to do. So I'm taking, here's, here's the front facing up. This is the back. So I'm taking a front and a front, and I'm just going to lay this front over on it. Now I'm going to take my crochet hook. So I have, I have a front and a front facing each other. And I'm going into the corner space and the corner space. Okay, that's what I have on my hook. And I'm going to pull. I'm just laying my yarn over that. I'm going to pull my loop up through this corner space. I'm going to grab the working yarn that's closest to me and chain one. I can drop that tail, but I am going to hold my tail coming along the side here. I'm going to try to crochet over this tail as I'm going. Now, I've chained, I've, I did uh, slip stitched in that, so I'm going to chain one here. Did I chain one already? I think I did, didn't I? Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go back through this corner space, bring this up, and I'm going to single crochet single crochet okay so what I'm gonna do in each stitch coming down is I'm gonna put one single crochet let me pull me out some yarn okay I'm gonna go into the next cluster the first one there and then the first cluster on the other granny square Okay, and I'm making sure I've got my tail there so I don't have to weave in too much. Alright, I'm just going to pull that through and sometimes it might be a little snaggy snuggly. And I'm going to single crochet. That. Okay, I'm going to do the next. Same thing, I'm just going to go in every stitch and single crochet. Just trying to make sure my, um, you know, single crochets there, my um, double crochets that I'm going into. I'm trying to just make sure they're lined up good. Is that one? Okay. When you get to the um, chain space, just go into both chain spaces, pull over, and double crochet. And then just keep doing that all the way down. And if you miss a miss a stitch there, it's it's gonna be okay. It'll be just fine. Because we're getting enough stitches on here that it, it works out. Okay, I'm going into that chain space. Now back to my double crochets. You just want to make sure you're getting all of your double crochet on there, meaning the front loop, back loop, and front loop and back loop of the next one. Okay, and then to the last corner and single crochet. All right, so I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving enough tail to weave in. All right, now this is the tail that I was crocheting over, so I'm going to push it back through to the back. It might be that I need to just grab it right here and pull it through to the back of my project. Oh my gosh, there's a mosquito on me. <laughs> okay, sorry. There's a mosquito flying around that landed on my forehead. Okay, 
So we just pull that tail to the back. All right, so we have two done. And now we need to connect our third one. So I'm just going to take it. This is the front. This is the front. Lay the fronts to the front. And same thing. Just single crochet that together real quick. Go in the corners. Bring your loop through. We're going to chain one there. Okay. Go back into the corners. Bring your loop up and single crochet. Okay, and I'm just going to single crochet across this and I'm going to go over this tail and just make sure you're getting um, loop one and loop two off of both stitches on both granny squares. It is easier to see the stitches when you're looking at the front instead of looking at the back because on this side we're looking at the back And then as we pull it apart to get the other one, we're looking at the front. So just keep going. It doesn't take but a minute to do this. Just to crochet these together real quick. Next cluster. Okay, I've got one more set to do and then the corner. All right, and now we're going to single crochet through our corner space. And that's what we have. Now we need to cut our yarn, tie off, and let's see what we have. Okay, again, there's my tail kind of came out to the front. So I'm going to... Pull it to the back. Um, I'm just looking to see where to go through to grab it. So I want to pull it to the back of the project. Okay, so now we have a couple tails here to weave in. And for me, my preference is I want to weave in tails really well because I don't want to wash my project and it come apart. I don't want to gift it to someone and then it come apart on them. How embarrassing <laughs> that would be. So I'm going to go up under my single crochets here. Also, I'm not one that's afraid for knots in the back of mine. Now, you can weave that in back and forth a couple of times, but I tell you what, I'm just going to knot mine off because I'm not, that does not bother me at all because I like the look of homemade. That's my goal is for my projects, you know, to look homemade. I don't 
um, my goal is not to look factory made or anything like that so I'll tie that off three or four times and then just snip it um, right there and I'm good with that that does not bother me at all but if you're weaving it in and you want to go back and forth then that's what you should do just because I knot mine doesn't mean everybody likes theirs that way. Some people knots really bother them, and that's okay. We are all different. Wouldn't it be horrible if we were all the exact same? It would be so boring. So, you do you, and I'll do me. And I do tie it, you know, several times there. But honestly, once the blanket is done and you've washed it or whatever, that all just kind of blends in and I don't ever see it. Now I have bad eyesight too, so. All right, so there is our centerpiece for our blanket. Look at there. Okay. Now, I want to change colors to go around for my next row um okay i'm trying to get my yarn situated here i had two tails and didn't know which is which okay so now we can just granny square around this to have a blanket here so what I'm gonna do is just come to my corner and I'm using a I'm gonna just grab that now that I can use this hook I'm going to do and it's a J hook too it's I didn't change hook sizes just the hook that I'm using I'm gonna put my yarn here in the corner same thing you did for the other just chain three And do your three double crochets just like we've been doing for every corner three double crochets chain two and then three double crochets uh oh Okay, and I'm going to chain one and then just three double crochets in the clusters all the way down. And that's what I'm going to do all the way around. And I will be back with you in just one moment. Okay, guys, we're back. We have made a granny strip to start a granny rectangle blanket. We took three granny squares to and put together and started a granny rectangle blanket. So I want to just show you um, on the blue one that I made, if you just keep going and going and going, it grows. <laughs> it grows and it is, you know, a granny rectangle blanket it's not a square um, it is you know a little bit longer than it is wider but it's not so long and too narrow you know what I'm saying so anyway there that's what we got going on and like I said in the um, earlier you can do this with scrap yarn you could do this with different cakes of yarn you have or you can just pick out some colors and color control how many rows you're gonna do of each color or whatever uh, make it your own use whatever colors you like if you you know have a certain football team that you're making it for you know 
you're making it for someone and they like a certain football team or whatever, um, you know, just pick your colors and make your own granny rectangle blanket to represent whatever. So that's what I have going on here. That's how I started this blanket here. And um, yeah, and this one is mostly scrap blues. I used up a bunch of scrap balls I had. Um, and a lot of them do not make a complete round and that's the way I wanted it like that's the look I was really going for it's kind of scrappy but yet um, blues and then I did add in a cake and I think this is the cake area that I added in right here it's um, a Karen cake maybe called something like blueberry cheesecake or something so that little section there is a Karen cake and then I went back to some scrap balls and next I'm going to um, do a another of those carrying cakes I'm gonna add that in I have two of those so I think I'm gonna add both of those in and just see how far it goes and what happens with it this one in particular is for my son Dakota he wanted a blue blanket just to put across the foot of his bed He's not looking for a full-size bed blanket. He's looking more for a um, just a throw-size blanket. So, um, yeah, I don't have to make it too big. So, I'll be finishing this one up soonish and then passing it on to him. But I will show it to you guys before it leaves me, <laughs> before it leaves my hands. So, that is the first way that we started out making a granny blanket. Okay, some people, you know... You might just be new to crochet and you're just not ready to learn another another thing right now. I'm there all the time. Like sometimes I feel like I'm just in overload mode. <laughs> I'm just in overload. I can't learn anything else right now. I have to just do what I know how to do. Okay, I've been there. I'm there sometimes, you know. I just don't want to do anything different because I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing, okay? And so maybe, you know, you know how to do a granny square, but you still you want to make a granny rectangle blanket. So we put three together and made this strip for the middle. And then I went around it and I did I ended up doing three rows around this. My granny now this this really doesn't like make any kind of I don't know why I'm even saying this <laughs> my granny square was three rounds and so I just went three rounds around that but that really doesn't make any kind of difference you can go good one round with a color two rounds three you could go ten rounds it's completely up to you so this is how my granny square rectangle blanket is turning out and I'm just going to go around this. I'm not working on this for any particular reason other than this video. But I am going to add to this blanket at times. I will just be adding um, colors. And I, I don't know. I'm just going to add random colors. Sometimes I, I don't know if I'm going to add three rows every time or not. I have no idea. Just depends on what I feel like doing at the moment. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. Um, we did single crochet those three squares together. So there's a little bit of a ridge there, but I don't think that's enough to make or break a blanket. Um, I'm fine with that for sure. So that's what I have going on. And I'm just going to add to this and keep adding to it as I want to and see how this blanket grows and what happens with it. Um, eventually, it will be bigger like this blue one and then and I'll come back and show it to you guys whenever it does grow and get a little bigger but I hope this video really did help someone and oh I do want to say something I have something to say about this okay there are sections here where the two granny squares join together there's a corner here and a corner here I just treated it just the same all the way down the side even though those corners are really close together I just did a cluster chain one a cluster and just went on I did not act any different with those corners that were close together okay and then the second row and third row just pulled that out and it's fine it's fine but I just wanted you to know that I didn't do anything special there I treated every 
the whole thing all the way down is you know the same so when I got to this corner here I did three double crochets I chained one and then I did three double crochets in the very next corner space that's connected right there so I did want to say that but anyway I do hope this video helped someone um, that was wanting to make a granny blanket but you know just wasn't ready to do this at the moment you'll get there one day um, if you know if that's your situation where you just didn't want to learn anything else right now <laughs> and this is easier for you um, make the blanket and enjoy it one day you will get there and you will feel like learning something new and you can pick this up and try it again so anyway guys thanks for joining me today um, let me know what you think about this video and I'm going to give you a spoiler alert tomorrow's video might be number three <laughs> it might be number three's way of making a granny blanket a granny rectangle blanket without doing this it's kind of like doing this but it's a little extra something okay so come back and join me tomorrow for another video where we are going to and we're going to show you how to do another blanket okay it's a granny rectangle blanket but it's a little bit different okay guys listen it's a beautiful day to crochet i hope you're having a wonderful day and i will see you in the next video bye friends